Now there's an experiment that you can do at school with your students. You'll need a setup a bit like this. So what you need is a piece of tube and then you need a long piece of string that can go through the tube. You need a mass on one end and you also need a set of hanging masses to hang off the other end. So what you're going to do is get students to swing the mass around They'll be measuring the period of the motion, so I'd recommend getting them to count how long it takes the ball to swing around 10 times. And they'll be using that to show a linear relationship. So how we calculate this linear relationship is you hang masses from this end of the string. So when you hang masses, it provides a weight force downwards. So that weight force is given by the hanging masses, which we'll call M subscript H times G, that's the weight force downwards, and that balances the centripetal force of the swinging mass. So the swinging mass has a centripetal force given by MV squared on R. Note that this is a different mass because the mass in this equation is the mass that is being swung. The mass in the other equation was from the hanging mass. So we know these two forces are equal to each other. So we've got mhg is equal to mv squared on r. Now we know that the velocity is given by 2 pi r on t, where t is the period, so we can substitute that in. So we have that mhg is equal to mr times 2 pi r on t all squared, which is equal to 4 pi squared r m on t squared. Now the trick when the students are taking their measurements is for them to keep this radius constant. So they can do that by marking a piece on the string and making sure that that bit of string remains at the top of their tube as they're swinging the mass around their head. So going back to our equation now, we can move the hanging mass and the period, which are our two variables, onto one side. So we have mh times the period squared is equal to 4 pi squared rm on g. So we're not changing the radius, we're not changing the mass which is undergoing the circular motion and obviously we're not changing g as we're not suddenly going to another planet. So if your students then do a graph where they put say mh along the x-axis and the one on the period squared on the y-axis, the gradient of this graph will be 1 on t squared divided by mh, which is 1 over t squared times mh, and this is equal to g over 4 pi squared rm, where r is the radius of the orbit, m is the mass which is being swung, and none of that stuff's changing. So they should end up with a nice straight line graph if they do this, and it gives them a bit of an opportunity to experience the circular motion equations.